good morning and welcome to a special day, a special broadcast. This is you know, outside of my normal photography masterclass schedule, which is all in flux, but I decided to go ahead and just broadcast this one on my own channels. Um, I don't have this one on Adobe Live. So if you're watching this, you're most likely watching it on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch or LinkedIn or even uh, X slash Twitter. So thanks for joining me on this Friday right off the mat, right after Max. I just got home late last night, so I'm kind of kind of spent, kind of burned out. But uh, I wanted to I wanted to do this this timely broadcast so I can bring you all in the loop of what's been announced and shipping and what you can do and use starting this past Tuesday. Uh, so a few days ago. Uh, three days ago to be exact, uh, you can start using for your photography using Photoshop, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, with Lightroom on phone, Lightroom on web, whichever one you're using, there's something new in it. Now, <clears throat> Photoshop, however, well, so let's, let's just get that one out of the way. Photoshop version 25 had already shipped before Max. So there was no 25 or, or 25.1, 2, 10, 6. It's still version 25, and maybe there is a dot release by now, but it, it's just a bug fix. So you got all the new features for Photoshop with all the generative fill, the generative expand, and all the new stuff. That already happened before Max. However, as of Max, we got a new Camera Raw that does, work, you know, is in Photoshop for people that use Camera Raw. And I'm going to show you the new things in Camera Raw, which are also in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Web and Lightroom Mobile and so forth and so on. So it, I wasn't lying when I said there's Photoshop, but it's not Photoshop proper. It's Photoshop's Camera Raw. All right. So I see some folks in my various channels, Rick Heath. Over on YouTube, hello Rick. I see a Facebook user that just says, "Hey Terry." I see Ozzy um, over on YouTube and and Nicholas on YouTube and Victoria and Sherry and uh, Mike's already asking a question for when you get the local file section. Is there a plan to include the option in Lightroom Mobile? All right, so yeah, I'm going to address that. Um, Dave, thanks for taking the time. Yep, my pleasure. Jim Babbage, hey man, what's going on? You look like you're already like well into retirement, even though I know you're not. I love the all the uh, out in the out at the cabin um, uh, vacation spot pictures. So, uh, with that said, without further ado, just welcome everyone. Welcome Steve, who just popped in. Uh, I'm going to go into. Uh, I think I will start with local storage, and there was a local storage question, so I'll talk about that. Uh, let's let's just jump into local storage because that's one of the big ones, and I don't want to save that to the end and run out of time. So let's get the big one out of the way first, and then we'll get to all the other cool ones uh, for people that are using all the other Lightrooms and Camera Raw. All right, let me switch to my desktop. Give it a second to switch over. I need to reboot that computer. It takes. It's like that should be instant. It's taking a second to switch now. I think it needs a reboot. But anyway, um, so this this one in particular, this one feature that I'm about to show you is a specific feature in Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, not Lightroom Web, not Photoshop Camera Raw, not Lightroom on your phone or your tablet, specifically one app, one one application, Lightroom, and I know there's a question, Lightroom Desktop. So this particular one, because I get I've been getting this question all week. Hey, is the local storage in this? Is it in, is it coming to classic? Is it in, in mobile? Is it right now today? It is only in Lightroom Desktop, and let me explain what I mean. So up until Tuesday, whenever you use Lightroom Desktop. You added, your, here, let me scroll up. You added your photos. Uh, you did a add photos here at the top. And your photos or videos that you added came into Lightroom and got synced. Well, next time you had an internet connection, they got synced to the cloud and backed up and all of that lovely loveliness that happens. And they were also available on your phone and your tablet and the web. Anywhere you went and logged into Lightroom, all the stuff you added was automatically there. Great. That still works the same way. Nothing changed. However, 
we heard loud and clear from people over the years that said, I would love to use Lightroom, but for various reasons, and they're all good reasons, but for various reasons, I don't necessarily want all everything in the cloud. I don't want my 200, in my case, my 277,000 photos and videos in the cloud. I don't have enough cloud storage. I don't want to pay, you know, tens of dollars a month <laughs> to, to have more storage. I don't want to play that game. I just want to be able to sync what I want to sync and have it backed up and have it everywhere, but then choose, pick and choose. So as of Tuesday, those users got their wish. Now in Lightroom, that one application, Lightroom Desktop, there is a new option, a new two new tabs, cloud and local. So, it, and here I'm not really doing a good job zooming in. Let's zoom it up here. That way you'll see it better. There we go. So cloud on the left, which is the Lightroom that it's always been since day one. Everything you add is in the cloud. You can organize in albums. You can put your albums in folders. Everything is synced and backed up. That doesn't change. You can still do everything that you always did. And all your photos and videos that you always had, already had are still there. But now there's a new tab called Local. And when you click Local, so you can switch back and forth between them at any given time. When you click on Local, it's your file system. It's all your drives, any drive you plug in, any memory card you plug in, any anything you plug in. And of course, your your uh, operating system's home folder with all your desktop and your documents and your downloads and in my case, Dropbox and Google Drive. Every folder that is connected to my computer, let's put it that way, is accessible and local. If it's accessible in the operating system, it should be accessible and local. All right, now if you got some weird permissions, okay, that's, that's your situation. But for everybody else, everything that's connected should be still connected. All right, so I can go to my server, which is a, a Synology NAS. I can go to my T white volume, which is also on that Synology NAS. I can go to anything that's connected to my computer. So for example, I have a folder from New York uh, photos and videos. So here's some videos and here's some uh, images and I'll just click on an image by, at random. And when I click on that image at random and switch to detail, um, it renders and I can immediately start editing it. So unlike, all previous versions of Lightroom, I don't have to add it first. I can just click, I can change the exposure, I can do auto tone, I can do any of the other things that I've always done that are here in the, in the editing panel. I can crop it, I can use geometry, I can do all the stuff that I always did. So I can do Again, nothing changed. I can do any editing that I would normally do to this photo. All right, so if that's the case, then is it in the cloud now? Nope, still locally on my drive. If I quit Lightroom and come back, will those edits still be there? Yes, because it's saving the non-destructive edits to the same location as the folder. If that folder is offline, Will I be able to come back to it? No, because it's just looking at the folder. If you unplug the drive, then the drive's unplugged. So you won't see it in local until you plug that drive back in. So again, it's treating anything in the local tab as, as of right now. So if you unplug, if I unmount the server, then server and T white won't be there. If I disconnect the drive, then the drive won't be there. Everything that's happened on that drive will still be there. Next time I plug it in, the edits will be there. All right, um, what happens if you're local, but you've already synced and edited the file using cloud? Any conflicts? Okay, so Jim just asked a question. We're going to get to that in just a second. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm stressing this point as much as I can. It's local storage. It's lo as of right now. There's no catalog. There's no um, collections or albums. It's just your local storage. You're, so you're managing these. This image is not backed up unless I back it up. So in other words, everything in cloud is Adobe's responsibility for backing up and making sure you still have a copy if something happens. Everything in local is your responsibility if something happens. So if I delete that image and erase and, and empty my trash or recycle bin or whatever, the image is gone. 
simple as that, just like it always is. So, uh, so treat local as if it's not been imported and protected by Lightroom because that's exactly what it is. It's local, it's on your drive, it's whatever you do to it on your drive. Now, with that said, let me go back to the grid. If I say, hey, uh, I don't like this photo with this guy. Uh, I, I don't like this photo at all. I don't like those people in my photo. And I right click on it and I delete one photo because I can delete. And it's, it's telling me, are you sure you want to move this photo to the trash? Because that's exactly what it did. It moved that photo to the trash. Next time I empty trash, that photo has gone. So it's treating your operating system, your local storage, just like you would treat your local storage. All right, so with that said, what other kind of management can I do while I'm here? Because you just saw me delete a photo. I can select multiple photos and delete them if I don't want them. Can I do metadata changes? Yep, I can make this a pick. I can make this a four star. I can, um, I can, I think I can keyword it. Um, Brooklyn Bridge, I can keyword it. So I do all the same stuff as if it were added to Lightroom, even though it's not. Uh, can you transfer from low? Yeah, we're gonna get to just a second. Uh, all the questions that I'm, I'm anticipating are coming up. Um, now, can I go over here to where my folders are? Can I delete a folder? No. We, we, we don't let you delete a folder from this view only because you may have other stuff in that folder that we don't know about. You may have Word documents in that folder. So we don't let you delete a folder because we, we, we are only looking at photos and videos. If you have other stuff in the folder we don't see, that would be kind of bad if we let you delete a folder and then you're like, wait, that folder had my resume in it. It had my tax documents in it. Oh no, I deleted it by mistake. So we don't let you delete folders. You have to go to the operating system and actually delete a folder. But we do let you create folders. So for example, if I go here and I, um, I clicked and I say, uh, create a new folder in desktop. And actually, no, I wanna create a new folder here. There we go, let's see, let's see if it'll let me do that. Yeah, create a new folder in, in NYC Photos and Videos. Create the new folder and call it Jim Babbage from Adobe because he's on, he's on the stream right now, Jim Babbage. So now, and I can include the selected photo or not, so I'm gonna say not. And so now there is a Jim Babbage folder. Now, did that just create it in Lightroom? No, because we're in local storage. So if I were to go out and look at, show me in the finder, that New York City photos and videos folder, there it is. And hey, there's a Jim Babbage folder in my operating system. And that folder is empty, just because I didn't add anything to it yet. So now if I were to go here and I were to drag, let's say take these three photos and drag them into the Jim Babbage folder, now those three photos are in the Jim Babbage folder. And if I go back to the operating system, show and finder, those three photos are in the Jim Babbage folder. Because this is your local storage, it's a mirror of what's happening on your desktop, your operating system because that's what it is, it's your operating system. So we're letting you, for the first time, work locally without ever having to add things to the cloud or not. Now, all the questions that have been coming up so far, let's now talk about that. So for example, I was here and I was working, I haven't worked on anything yet, but let, I, did, I think I did, but I don't remember which one it was. But let's say I go in and I now want to work on this one. And this one can use some work. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, do my normal stuff. I want to do, this is a raw file, so I could choose a raw profile. I can do landscape or vivid. I kind of like vivid, not big, of, not a huge difference. I want to auto tone it. Oh no, I don't, definitely want to bring down the exposure. I might want to denoise it. I might want to do all of these things I normally do. Let me scroll down here and see what else I can do. It's already been sharpened. There's my denoise if I wanna denoise it. Uh, we're gonna get into lens blur in a minute. I want to also create, oh, there it is down at the bottom. I wanna to go to geometry and I wanna do an auto upright. There we go, and straighten it out, great. And um, so let's say that's all I wanted to do. Now, so far as we, as I kept iterating, 
All of that just happened locally. But Terry, if it happened locally and that's a raw file and you can't edit a raw file, meaning you can't really do anything to it, where are all those metadata changes being stored? Because normally those metadata changes, the guide, the, the upright, the auto, the profile, all of that would be stored in Lightroom or Lightroom Classics catalog. So where is that information being stored now? Because you're working locally, it's not in a catalog, it's not in Lightroom, where's that information being stored? As you might have already guessed, it is being stored. If I go show this image in the finder here, is it gonna let me do that one for an image? Dun, 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 dun. Show in finder, there it is. If I show that image in the finder, there is, right next to it as I expect it, here let me zoom in so you can see it, there's the image I worked on and an XMP file next to it. So this file contains all the edits locally on my drive. This file is the actual image. So the XMP, because it's a raw file and raw, you can't add anything to the actual raw file, it saves it as an external sidecar file. If it were a DNG, it would put it in the file. If it were a JPEG, it would put the non-destructive stuff in the file. But since it's a raw file from the camera manufacturer, it can't do that. All right, now, the other big question that keeps coming up. Okay, I, I like that photo a lot. I, I don't, <laughs> so I like that photo, it, it needs some more work. Well, let's say I like that photo a lot. Uh, can I mark it a pick? Yep, we already did that. Can I mark it four stars? It's not a five star yet. It's probably not even a four star yet, but it's gonna get there. Can I um, then copy it to the cloud because I really like it? Yes. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a button. You can select more, one or more photos and you can choose copy to cloud. So imagine this is your workflow. You go do a shoot. You come back with your memory card. You stick your memory card in your computer. You copy over 500 images to your drive, your drive of choice, whatever drive it is. You go to local, the local storage tab. You work on 10 of those photos. Those are your favorites from the 500. So out of 500, 10 are your favorites. The 490, and eh, they're okay. So now you take the 10 that you've edited and you say, those are really good. I want those stored. I want those backed up. I want those in the cloud. I want them on all my devices. So you would just select all 10. Click copy to cloud. It's going to give me this little thing, letting me know that, hey, if that's already there, it's going to overwrite the metadata. I'm going to say OK. And that answers Jim's question, I think, a little bit, but maybe not. Uh, now, if I were to go to the cloud now, did it do it? Copy that one photo to the cloud. I said yes. Should have done it, or it's doing it. If I go to the cloud now and I go to recently add it, Yep, just now there was one image recently added. That image is now being synced. There's a little sync icon right there. That image is being synced, uploaded, backed up. If disaster happens, I'll be able to get that image back. The other 499, because I haven't done the other nine yet, are gone if something happens to my drive, if I didn't back them up. So I can copy as many as I want. Now, does that mean that once you've copied it, you can't work on it locally anymore? Yes, you can. <laughs> Jim's asking this back and forth sync stuff. Uh, I'll get to all that in just a second, Jim. If I, I'm doing it now actually. If I copy it to the cloud, which I just did, and it's in the cloud now, it's, it just finished backing up, so now it's protected. If I go to my phone, if I go to my tablet, if I go to the web, it's there then can I make more changes? How does that work? Is it still local? How does that work? So let me do the last question first. Yes, it is still local. If I go back to the local tab, there it is. It's still there. It copy, That's why I said copy, not move. It copied it to the cloud. Can I work on this one still? Sure. Let's go in this one and just to make it a visual difference, let's make it... Um, Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Yep, switch to detail. Let's make it a, um, a black and white. All right, so now it's a black and white, and let's really pump up the exposure so we can really see it. All right, so now, great, I made that one a black and white. Did that happen to the one in the cloud? No, 
The one in the cloud is still the one in the cloud. There are two separate photos now. I, I like that black and white. Can I get that version into the cloud too? Yes. If I go back to local and I go back to that photo, this button isn't updating, but what it should say is copy edits to the cloud. And that will copy your edit to the cloud so that the one in the cloud is also black and white. So you can work on the local one still, even though there's one in the cloud, they can be different because I'd made this one black and white. The other one was still color. They can be the same. If I copy the edit that I just made to the cloud, then it will copy the edit. And, then, and like I said, this should say copy edits. Let me try it one more time. Copy photo to cloud. Yeah, I shouldn't even be getting, you know what? Let me try a different, different set of photos here. Let me go here. All right, let me just copy this one to the cloud. I shouldn't even be getting this message all the time, but let's go ahead. All right, if I go back to the cloud now, and just now that one's been copied, great. It's update, it's uploading, great. And if I come back to this one and I make some changes to it now, make it really dark. See there, that's what it should say. It should, oh, and maybe it only does that when you're in the edit tab, sorry. So it should say update edits in the cloud. So that was the mistake I was making. I was still, I was in grid view. All right, so let me show you that again. Let's go back to the ones we were in and let's go back to that photo we were working on, which is this one. And if I go to detail, there we go. Update edits in the cloud. So you have to be in the, in the editing view to do that. So if I want the black and white version that I worked on locally to also be in the cloud, then I can say, yep, Go ahead and update that one or not, your choice. And if I say update, yes, overwrite the metadata as well. And now if I go to the cloud version and I go to three minutes ago, that one is black and white as well. So here's the only thing that doesn't work. Well, what if I now make this, if I crop this one or do something to this one? So let's do, let's do that. So let's go to, uh, yes, yeah, switch to detail. I hate that button, by the way. Switch to detail and let's uh, go to crop and let's crop this one. Let's do this. Okay, so we did an extreme crop and we get out of it and we go back. Okay, I cropped the cloud version. If I go to local, is my local one once I find it again, wherever it is in here? Is that, there, there it is. Is that one cropped? No. Can I copy the edit that I did in the cloud down to the local one? No. So the syncing the edit is in one direction. It's up to the cloud. If you want to do something different, they can be different. If you want to do something to both of them, do it to the local one and sync it. Because once you do it to the cloud version, the local one is still local, independent, not going to get those changes. So that question comes up all the time. I get that all the time. and. Can I work on the image still on the memory card before I upload it to local storage? Yeah, you can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> you can, because memory card, the reason I say I wouldn't is memory cards tend to be fragile. Like they tend to cr get corrupted and stuff like that. You can do it, but keep in mind, now you're gonna be writing metadata to that card and I just wouldn't do it. Like I look at the card as all, like almost like another backup until I get everything backed up. So yes, it would work, no, I wouldn't recommend it for the reasons that I, all the years I've just had things, weird things happen to cards. And you got to remember, if it's on the card and that's your only copy and you screw that up, you're screwed. So, yes, it will work. No, I wouldn't do it. All right. The metadata is uh, there. Very helpful. Thank you. Great. Jim's, Jim's happy now. Um, can I create smart previews as we do in Collection Live and Classic, uh, which doesn't affect Creative Cloud Storage? Lightroom doesn't have smart previews. So no, Lightroom doesn't have virtual copies. So no, it's, it's, it doesn't have those features. So you're not creating, because the, the reason you were creating virtual copies is because it was mostly a, a desktop only product for all of its life. This started out as a cloud product. So there was really no reason to create virtual copies. So local storage doesn't have any of that. All right. Um, all right. Any roadmap? 
Any roadmap to allow me to use classic local database items, edit, and merge them to the cloud version of Lightroom? You can kind of already do all that. So if I were in Lightroom Classic, let's bounce over. These are the same demo files that I was going to show you in a minute. Um, they're stored locally. So they're all, I'm already doing local edits because they're stored locally. They just have, the only, the only difference is in Lightroom, I don't have to add them to Lightroom to work on them. In Lightroom Classic, you still have to import or add them to Lightroom Classic to work on them, but they're still local. They're, they've always been local. And if you want to sync them to the cloud, put them in a collection and sync them to the cloud. That's always been the case. The only difference is it doesn't sync the originals. It only syncs smart previews. And I don't, and you, you can stop wishing for that. I don't ever expect that to change. I, I'm just being honest with you. I don't ever, uh, ever's a long time and anything can happen. And I could be proven wrong and I hope that I am someday. But I don't ever expect them to go back to Lightroom Classic and say, you know what, we're just going to let people sync originals up to the cloud. I don't expect that. I just don't. All right, so I'm, I'm just, I, I don't want you to hang on to some expectation that's probably not going to happen. All right, so with that said, um, everything in Lightroom Classic in terms of syncing has already been there. It's smart previews. They're everywhere on your devices. There's no limit, so it's not taking up storage. So it's actually a pretty good workflow. If you go to Lightroom and do any of this, that, and you have Lightroom Classic sync turned on, the originals do come down to Lightroom Classic. That's where all of these photos came from. They were in Lightroom first. They came down to my Lightroom Classic because I had syncing turned on. Uh, so I do have the originals here in Lightroom Classic. All right. Uh, then it goes to Lightroom Classic, right in the cloud. Um, okay, so I edit my photo on my iPad in Lightroom. Then it goes to Lightroom Classic, right in the cloud. If then work on Lightroom Classic in my computer, does the new edit in Lightroom Classic get saved to my iPad. Yes, that's the way it's always been. So if if I now edit one of these photos because these this collection is synced, any edit I do will go back to the cloud, back to Lightroom desktop, back to my iPad, back to my phone. It'll go everywhere. So nothing's changed in terms of Lightroom classic syncing. If you're asking all kinds of questions about Lightroom classic syncing, we don't have the time and the bandwidth to do all that today. Go look at my videos about Lightroom Classic and syncing. That all, because it's not changed. The, the same, all the master classes we've done on syncing from Lightroom and syncing to Lightroom Cloud and all of that from Classic is still the same. So go look at those videos and go learn all the ins and outs. And because again, I could spend a whole hour, which I've done, uh, just on syncing alone. So that's all changed. That's all the same. All right. So now let's go back. And I think we kind of covered. Everything I wanted to cover in Lightroom's local storage. See, see how much time that took? Almost a half hour. All right, so the other thing, just one more brief thing, is that it also applies to video. So I'm in my local storage. Here's some videos I shot with my Nikon. Uh, the videos are here. I can play them. I can scrub through them, maybe. There we go. I can scrub through them. I can play them. I can do any of my... Um, my uh, Lightroom things to video, and you can do more in video uh, in Lightroom than you can in Lightroom Classic, which is kind of cool. So yeah, all my video things are there. If I want to trim the video, I've got my cropping. I can set my trim points. Uh, I can do it visually here. I can uh, do all of that. And again, the edit is happening. Now, the other question that no one's asked yet is what happens when you're done doing your edit? So I, I done this, I did this edit, I made it black and white, it's not finished, but let's say it was, now what? We went, we launched Lightroom, we went to local, we did all the edits we want to our photos and videos, now what? You copied the ones to the cloud you wanted to copy, now what? You export, just like you always did. So if you never put it in the cloud, you open local storage, you did your edit, and you export it, and it never went to the cloud. It's up to you if you want it to go to the cloud or not. So I would hit export and I would export out a JPEG, an original, a different format, whatever size I want. All of that is the same. That This whole button didn't change except for a couple new formats that I'm going to get to. So that's all the same. There, boom, done. All right, next, got to move on. But local storage, I did a whole video on local storage. Um, I think it's on the Lightroom channel, but it's also on my YouTube 
go check out those things in detail. I think we did more detail here than I did in that video, but um, feel free to ask more questions as we go. Got to move on though to the next things. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the cloud. I'm going to go back to my album that has all my stuff in it. And that same album, by the way, is as a collection in Lightroom Classic. They're the same. They're not in the same order, but they're the same. Uh, it's also on my phone. So if I switch over to my iPhone, there it is on my phone. Same album in Lightroom on my phone. I don't have my iPad connected, but it would be on my iPad as well. If I go and look at Lightroom in a browser, it's there too. So this is lightroom.adobe.com signed in with the same album. So literally, if it's in the cloud, no matter how it got there, whether it got there from Lightroom, whether it got there from your phone, whether it got there from your iPad, whether it got there from Lightroom Classics Sync in a Collection, they're everywhere once it's in the cloud. Okay, so and again, any changes you make anywhere, the sync happens to all of them everywhere. So now let's talk about um, the rest of the new features. Let's talk about the, uh, oh, the local storage iPad question. Okay, so well, let's, let's cover that one now. We'll, we'll go to the phone because I usually don't, I run out of time before I get to that. All right, so if you've updated your phone uh, or your iPad recently, you'll notice that there's a, new, there's a new structure at the bottom. You'll notice that it says device now, and it says Lightroom, and it says uh, community instead of discover. So Lightroom is the one in the middle is the one it's always been. You can get to your albums, your collections, you can get to the photos, you can do edits, you can do all that stuff. Device is your camera roll. So very similar to local storage, it's all the stuff in your camera roll, which may or may not be in Lightroom. So here's a bunch of Max photos I took. Um, and notice as I scroll back in time, so up at the top, these will be the newest ones. As I scroll back in time, then I get to some photos that have LRs in the upper left corner. Those photos have been added and synced to Lightroom. All the ones above them have not. So this is literally everything on my camera roll. So there are screenshots on there. There's um, there's hotel bills and receipts and things I took with my camera. Here's a screenshot on how to do things with a particular device I have in my smart home because it's my camera roll. So it's everything I've ever shot, screenshot, video recorded, whatever is here. If I want to work on a photo, let's say I take this photo and I want to work on it. I hit edit, it's still on, it's, it's in my camera roll, but the minute I do anything to it, I hit auto. The minute I do anything, auto, lighting, color, whatever, cropping, whatever, it copies that one to the cloud. So I no longer have to have auto import on. I don't have to ha get them all into Lightroom first before I can do anything with them. I can scroll my camera roll, very much like local storage. I can pick anything. The only difference is in local storage, you have a choice to never put it in the cloud and just edit it. In Lightroom on your mobile device, it still copies it to the cloud the minute you edit it. And why is that? Because at least on iOS, there's no file system. There's no finder. There's no, there's a files app, but there's no real local place to keep the metadata. Where would it keep the changes? It's not going to, Apple's not going to let you put them in your camera roll. So where would it keep the metadata of the edit? So that's why on iOS, at least, it has to copy it to the cloud because there's nowhere to store the information if it's not in Lightroom. Does that make sense? Whereas in your operating system on your computer, it's a folder. It's storing it next to the photo. In your iPad, the images on your camera roll are in Apple's Photos app. They're not in just a, a generic um, uh, file structure. So that's why that we can't do the exact same thing as local storage. But we did the next best thing. We don't make you import all your photos just to uh, say, I only want to edit these three. You edit those three, then they are copied to the cloud. Okay, so that's the difference. And that's why there's a difference. Okay, so now that photo, yep, that photo's been, uh, that, that mo your most recent photo has been saved here. It's telling me that that's in Lightroom now. So if I were to go to Lightroom and I would go to my edits, there it is. It's in Lightroom now. That edit's being synced and backed up. And there we go. Okay, so now if I were to go in to my albums here, 
back to where I was, demo, and what's new, and what's new in 2023. There we, we're back to the same album. Let me show you the stuff on desktop. Makes sense, great, so true, no, yep, yeah, okay, so you get the idea. All right, so now let's go back and let's talk about um, desktop. Okay, the other three things, well, I still have time. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot on local storage. See, if we had waited to the last minute, you would have never got all that for local storage. All right, so now let's, let's move on to um, my one of my other favorite new features, which is lens blur. So lens, so local storage is only in Lightroom desktop. I'm going to tell you where lens blur is. Lens blur is available in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom on your mobile device, and Lightroom Web, so pretty much everywhere. Uh, so what's lens blur? It's a extremely cool implementation of lens blur. We've had lens blur in Photoshop for a while. This blows the one in Photoshop away. There's no comparison. So let's go ahead and double click. All right, this is not my photo. I think this photo was shot by Katrin Eisman. She's just one of the demo files she provided. I'll show you one of my photos in a second. Um, actually one of Victoria's photos of our dogs, but I'll, I'll show you this photo in a second or another photo. So what, what is lens blur? If I scroll down in my panel, and again, I'm in Lightroom, this will be in Lightroom, it's in, it's in Lightroom Classic, it's on your phone, it's on the web, it's everywhere. So when you, when you see lens blur, you'll notice that there is a button next to it that says early access. So this is kind of a, it's not finished, it's a beta feature, it's, it's early, we're giving you early access to it. So you can tell us what needs to be adjusted or fixed in it. And you can provide feedback, I believe, by clicking that button. I haven't clicked it yet, but I think that's where you go provide the feedback. But you give us feedback on how it works. Here's how it works for you to know how to start using it. So you go to your photo, you go to scroll down the lens bar and you click apply. When you click apply, that will start estimating the depth. And then you know you might not, it was so subtle, you might not even notice. But look at the light fixture in the ceiling. Turn it off, turn it on. Let me zoom in. Not that much. <laughs> Let me zoom in a little. All right, light fixture, light fixture. So that's the lens blur. It's so good, so shallow, so like blending so well that it's not, it, it, it's natural is I guess the word I'm trying to look for. You can control the blur amount so I can make it blurrier and everything that's in focus, I can start to see the edges around his sleeves start to get blurry, but because I've got it on so much but it, it does a really good job. So how does this work? Well, if I visualize the depth, we can actually see what it thinks is the subject and we can see the areas that it thinks should be out of focus. So you have a visual focus range here as well that you can move. So I can move the focus range and when I get out of the visualization, I can start to see he's starting to become out of focus because the light fixture is in focus now. I can even condense the focal range and make him more out of focus because the light fixtures and in, in. so it's basically like turning your lens and controlling the focus after the fact on what areas you want to be focused. Now that was me moving the focal range slider. Let me move it for you without the visualization on and you can literally see it happen as I drag it back and forth. All right, uh, next up. All right, um, so there's a feedback question there, uh, or feedback statement. All right, so now uh, I can go in and I can say that, okay, I can even, I can, I can say select subject automatically, which is what it did, or I can pick the point. So I can go and say, you know what? His brother is more important. Click the brother. The brother is now in focus. The light fixture is out of focus. He's slightly out of focus. I can set my focal point to whatever I want. If you set your focal point to what you want and you're still not happy with the way, it, the way it did it automatically, you have the ability to go in and brush in focus or blur wherever you see fit. So I can go in and I can say, hey, I want the, this hand to be in focus. So I can go and brush his hand or his watch in focus, even though that's not what I told it to do from where I set the focal point. So now in focus, out of focus, in focus, something you're, that would be, I don't know, near impossible to do in the camera and get that right. But I can do that in post after the fact. I can control any part of the photo of what should be in focus and what should not be in focus. 
Now, I'm going to get into the different uh, bokeh effects on a better image. So here's another one. This is just so this is one of our images here. This shot on iPhone. And of course, on iPhone, you have portrait mode, but maybe you didn't remember to use portrait mode. So I go ahead and apply it. It will figure out the dogs are the focus and the fence is now out of focus. And I can make the fence more out of focus. And again, I can select the fence to be in focus. And now the dogs are out of focus. So I can pick and choose what I want to be in focus with the focal range or with the selector. Amazing. All right, let's move on. Let's do one more. This is one of my favorite examples. I just downloaded this one from stock this morning. So we got the, we got our barbecuer in, in, um, in, his, in, in, in you know, full barbecue mode. And we have these lights. And it, I, I didn't know if this would work because the lights are kind of in the foreground. So, you know, if it's just picking what the foreground element is, then the lights would be in focus and he would be out of focus. So I said, oh, let me try what see what happens. So I clicked apply. And it did the right thing. It's smart enough to know that the lights, although they're closer, they're not the subject. So now we got the lights out of focus. He's still in focus. Other elements that are in the background are out of focus. The, 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 the um, plant is in focus. So it's really doing that good job. And again, if it didn't get it just right, you can go in and change it. Now, now we get into seeing what these, um, these bokeh shapes are like. So if I were to go ahead and zoom in on the lights, let's zoom in a little bit more. And I were to change the bokeh effect, you'll see the difference. Now, it's not going to be a huge difference depending on which one I click. So that one's they're just a little sharper and rounder. This one, they're kind of more octagon. This one, they're, I don't know, round. <laughs> and this one, they're rounder yet. Now, this one, they're round and there's a hollow, but I really don't see it unless I make more blur. There we go. Now we really see that hollow, that cutout effect. So this is where we started. With more blur, we can really see the shapes. There's the octagon. We can see it now. There's the cutout and there's the half shapes. So you can even control what the bokeh looks like in your blur. And this is what blows me away by the amount of detail in this. And again, if I don't want so much blur, I can pull it back, pull it back, pull it back to no blur. So this is all the way, all the way off, anywhere in between that you like it. And you get that bokeh effect. Very cool. And this is, uh, the, so the, that was a stock one. This is either Katrin's or another stock. But just again, these little speckles of light, just to show you what you get when you do the lens blur. Um, there you go. Lens blur apply. And if I make them blurrier, you see the speckles of light and you see what's happening to them, including that shape with the circles cut out. So just very cool. And again, it figured out what the subject was. It kept the ball in focus, kept everything in focus, except for what would have been naturally out of focus. All right. Uh, so that's lens blur. Go have some fun with that. And that even works on mobile. So if I were to go to mobile... Let me show you because I had a question. I don't see lens blur. Where is it on my phone? All right, let's go to the phone. Uh, this is not a good lens blur photo. Let's get out of this one. Let's go to these, these guys. And I hit edit. And I scroll over. Oh, they were asking for profiles. Actually, it's just blur. Sorry, the question was, I don't see profiles. The profiles, you have to scroll to see them. But blur is right there in the middle. I just tap blur. And the only thing you don't get to do here is you don't get to set your visual range or any of that stuff on mobile right now. So again, it automatically selected. I can choose my focus point, but I can't like set, I, I don't have that, that visual slider that I used before. All right, I can set the bokeh, which doesn't really apply on this one. I can choose the point of focus. So you get it on your phone and your iPad as well. Um, all right, so that's lens blur. Next up, and I've been doing all of this in Lightroom. Let's switch over to Lightroom Classic because just to show you, you can do it there too. Uh, and by the way, so if I were to go to this photo and I were to go to the develop module and I were to uh, scroll down, there's lens blur right there in Lightroom Classic. So same thing, same control, same effects, same everything as Lightroom on desktop. All right, so next up, let's go to point color. Point color. 
is going to be my new best friend for working with challenging lighting. So in this case, we have our fireman, which is great. He's standing next to a fire truck, which is reflecting all that red on him. Now, if I were to go into develop before, and I were to go to the color mixer, and I were to go to the old color mixer, and I would say, oh, you know what? Take down the reds in this image. Well, yeah, it takes down the reds out of his face and hair, but also takes it out of the fire truck. And it's just, it, point color is just so much better. So if I switch over to point color, I now get a selector to pick the red that I want to adjust. So I can go right to his hair, for example, pick that red, and then adjust it. But you're saying, oh, Terry, it's still happening to the truck. You're still getting the same problem. Here's the difference. Let's undo it. Well, remember we have all that great masking in Lightroom? Well, if I hit mask, it will detect the person eventually who will figure out that there's a person there. AI at its best. There it is. So we got our person, and now I could say, well, I want the facial skin, the body skin, which is the hand, the eyebrows, just in case, the lips, just in case, his hair, and his facial hair. I want all of those things to be a mask. Create the mask, now I got all those things as a mask. Great. So now if I were to go to that point color, and I were to select the red in his hair, and I were to pull it back, it's limiting my adjustment to that mask. This is a game changer. I hate saying game changer. This is a game changer. All right. So, um, so someone said, hey, lens blur doesn't come up on Androids. It may depend on the Android. Go check the system requirements. Um, because we, you know, some features only work on newer processors of newer phones. So check the system requirements for lens for Lightroom on mobile, and you'll see which features work on your particular phone. Okay. Um, so there we are. Cool. Lens blur. Nope. Point color. Point color on just the subject because of the mask. In my video I did earlier, I forgot to select his hand. So I didn't do body skin. But here I'm today, I'm showing you body skin and how that works. All right. This is, again, I, I don't know how else to say it. It's going to be pre pretty freaking cool. All right. Here's another one. Just a quick one. The green is reflecting from the helicopter. This is uh, Katrin's example. Uh, into the model's face. So we're getting that green on our face. So again, we go back to develop, mask. Um, I think she's already masked the hair. She's already masked the face. I would have done one mask. But anyway, we go to that mask. Has this one already? Uh, hang on, let me reset the edits. Let me just reset it. There we go. So now we get our person and I would have done facial skin and eyebrows and lips and hair and get that all as one mask create the mask and then go to the point color and then we can get that kind of green you know like that green and we can say no 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 take that green out of my subject leave it in the helicopter take it out of her great all right so that's point color very cool last but not least that i have time for today is we did Local storage, lens blur, point color, now for HDR. And this is kind of one of those things I'm going to show you, show it to you. You won't see it because this stream is not in HDR. Or you may not even be looking at it on an HDR monitor. And if you're looking at the replay on YouTube or whatever, that's not HDR. So you're not going to really be able to really see the advantage of it unless you go look at my other video. And I'm going to bring that video up and show you what I mean where I actually, I actually point my, my camera at my screen so you can see it happening. And also, I'm not even editing this right now on an HDR screen, so you're really not going to really see it anyway. But let me show you what I mean. Uh, yeah, because I'm on an older Wacom that's not HDR. So uh, let's get into develop, and let's get out of HDR. Uh, basic, yeah, let's turn that off. Okay, so we've had the ability to work with HDR um, for years. You've been able to merge HDR photos together in Lightroom for years. You've been able to work with HDR in Photoshop for years. Single image or, or multiple bracketed exposures, doesn't matter. Now we have a new feature that we were, we're referring to as HDR optimization. So what is HDR for those of you who don't know? 
high dynamic range. So the HDR feature, I just want to tell you what platforms it's available on. It's on Lightroom, it's on Lightroom Classic, it's on Camera Raw. And Lightroom for mobile, iOS and Android, and Lightroom Web. So, uh, and of course, requires an HDR display. Uh, you're, now, you might be saying, well, Terry, I don't know if I have a new HDR display. Will this work for me? If you're on a phone, for example, every iPhone since the iPhone 10, we're on iPhone 15. Since the iPhone 10 has been an HDR display. Your MacBook Pro, if you have a newer MacBook Pro, is probably an HDR display. So if you're on Windows, I don't know because you can use any different Windows display, but LG makes some pretty inexpensive HDR displays. I think I saw one for like under 200, like 150, something like that. So um, HDR displays are plentiful. You've been having, oh, your iPad Pros have had them for years. You've had HDR for a long time. You just couldn't see it. So for example, in this photo that I merged together, so this was three bracketed exposures merged together as an HDR, um, I can now go in and click HDR. So before I click it, let me explain what's going on in the histogram. You have your blackest points all the way down to black. You have your lightest points all the way to white. The sky is pretty washed out. And if I reset the highlights, it's even more washed out. And we can highlight over it and see where it's completely white. And the red areas are completely white. Up until now, you were only your the brightest point of your image was the brightest point of your monitor. Like whatever the whitest point of your monitor was, that's all you could get. Now, when I turn on HDR, I can go up to four stops past that white and see all that information that's there. I'm not seeing it on this screen because this is not an HDR display. You're not seeing it on your screen, probably looks still white and washed out because you're not looking at it. You're not, the video is not HDR, even if you're on an HDR display. So let me bring up my video that's on my YouTube channel and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go to QuickTime. Here's me doing this demo with the same image and I'm gonna hit play and I hear myself talking, but whatever. Uh, so I point at my camera, in a second you'll see me switch to it. I'm saying so that you can see, blah, blah, blah. There. Now I'm on, I'm pointing at an HD, I'm pointing at my MacBook Pro. See the difference when I switch to HDR? That's before, that's all the data. You see the standard dynamic range, which is SDR, and you're most likely looking at this video because the video is SDR, you're not seeing it. But when I click on HDR, you get those four stops of color. And when I switch back to the actual HDR display in a moment here, hopefully, you'll see the difference again. I'm explaining the all the extra data that's there, but you were never, never, never able to work with it before. Um, and now there we go. So now you can see what HDR, what I see when I look at that image on my HDR display, I, this is what I'm seeing. Now, you might say, well, okay, Terry, that's great, but what if somebody's looking at your photo and that's visualizing HDR? What if, and here, let's stop the video. Let's get out of the video, let's go back. So we're in HDR and let's visualize the HDR. So that, all that blue stuff, that's the HDR data that we can't see in SDR, it's there. So now you're on your HDR display, you make your adjustments in beautiful HDR. You might be saying, well, Terry, how does anyone else get to see it if they even have an HDR display since you can't do it from a video? Well, you can export it. So when you export out your final HDR edited image, you'll now have a choice in JPEG even to include the HDR output. Yep, that's a new checkbox or choose JPEG XL, which is a new format for HDR, or AVIF, which is a new format for HDR. So any one of these three can contain the HDR um, data. Now, JPEG XL, not gonna upload that to Instagram, that's not gonna work. Still needs to be a regular JPEG for most places you're gonna post a JPEG. But now you can at least include that HDR output so that if somebody's looking at it on an HDR display, they'll see your beautiful photo. And this is, this is the beginning of this. So full HDR impact from, or I'm reading this thing, does it have impact or print? Full HDR optimization from creation to editing, now to output. 
And Jim's asking, does it impact your printing of your images? No, because your images are being printed in a color space that's for printing, not for HDR. Uh, so it has no impact other than you might be disappointed that it doesn't look as good as it looked at on screen because your printing process is probably not HDR. This is game changing. Great. I'm glad you're able to appreciate it as much as I do. And, and, and for us, the hardest thing for us to do is teach this and show it because you can't see it. Like I can't make a video where you see it, even if you have an HDR TV, because all the other pieces aren't in place yet. When, when YouTube's in HDR, when the recording software is in HDR, when everything's in HDR, just like it took us all the time it took us to get to 4K. Remember all those 4K commercial TV commercials? You were looking at it on 1080p. You couldn't appreciate what 4K really looked like because you're not looking at it in 4K. You can't really appreciate what HDR looks like because you're not looking at it in HDR yet. Once everything's HDR, then we'll we'll forget about these days where SDR was a thing, and we'll just be looking at beautiful HDR images. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's kind of it. All right, so let me do a couple more new things. We did the phone stuff. The phone is great for HDR because, again, most of your phones already have HDR displays. Your Samsungs, your your um, iPhones, since iPhone 10 have, have HDR displays. So you can go play in HDR even just on your phone. Um, and that's a beautiful place to play with it because a lot of times you can shoot directly in HDR from the app. So you can shoot HDR right on your phone and then edit it on your phone and see it on your phone in HDR. All right, um, let me just make sure I didn't forget anything else. For my uh, fellow Nikon Z8 shooters, the latest version of Lightroom Classic that just shipped 13, that just shipped this week, also tethers to the Nikon Z8. And uh, there was one more little thing it had to do with the phone. I think we covered it. Yeah, the new editing experience. We covered it on the phone. Uh, discard the changes. Um, yeah, I think I got everything. All right. If you want to see a blog post, a blog post detailing this in text and videos, head to terrywhite.com. That is where I, this is the most recent post. So that's where I posted all of the details of all of this information, the platforms that it works on, so forth and so on. Can you, uh, how can you, how can you in updated HDR adjustment then pull down visually so it can be seen on a normal monitor as new, as new, you can't. It's like saying, how can I just have a 4K image and look at it on a 1080p monitor in 4K? You can't. If it's a SDR monitor, it's going to be, it's going to be all that data is down sampled to SDR to look at on that monitor. They won't see it as HDR on a non HDR monitor, just like they won't see 4K on a 720p display because it's not 4K. And just like you won't see 8K on your 4K TV because your 4K TV is not 8K. It, it just, it's just the way it works. Science. <laughs> All right. So with that said, uh, thanks for joining me, everyone. Um, I imported images and it didn't recognize a lens. You got to give me way more detail than that. Imported images where? What lens? Uh, it depends. So we update our camera raw and Lightroom and Lightroom Classic to new lenses and camera combinations all the time. Go check the compatibility and make sure your lens and camera combination are supported. All right. Uh, in your video, it showed the blue sky in your video because I made a video. <laughs> so I pointed my, my phone to an HDR display. But even then, that video isn't really showing everything. You just saw a more dramatic change. So again, that's why. Uh, Z8 to Z7, Nikon Z70 to 200. All right, it, it should. I have that combination. It should work. Um, yeah, I use a Z8 with a 7200 lens, so mine is supported. I'm not sure why yours isn't. Uh, is it the Z8, is it the adapter, the FT, FTZ adapter, or is it the native 7200? That's the only thing I can think of that might be a difference. All right, with that said, Thanks, Andrew Kavanaugh, for all that you do and everyone else for being here. And um, I'm out. I got a, another appointment in a half hour that I got to get ready and drive to. Thanks, everybody. Catch the replay. Head to terrywhite.com to check out the blog post, more details, a link to another blog post with more details. Everything's there. Cheers, everybody. Have fun.